Hello, book team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. It has been a couple of minutes since I have had time to do a video. That is because I've been busy reviving our eBay store and just working on listing and selling. And if you're interested in that, I've got a couple of videos out so far about my journey you know, learning to sell on eBay, and there will be another one coming here, hopefully pretty soon. But I wanted to get back to the business of BookTube because that, of course, is my first love, at least, you know, here on this format. And I appreciate you guys so much. In fact, a few months ago, I was talking about uh, a couple of books that I have with pigs on the cover. And somebody said, well, why don't you do a video about it? And I thought, that would be a fun idea. So this video is devoted to books featuring pigs. Now, what is my interest in pigs? I did grow up on a farm. We didn't raise hogs. We raised cattle, but we occasionally had horses and occasionally had pigs. Mostly the pigs that I had when I was a, a kid were purchased for me as a 4-H project to show at the county fair, at the livestock show, things like that. And I did that and I really enjoyed the experience of raising pigs and they're just so much fun. So I've always been kind of drawn to pigs and I have several books that feature pigs. A few I've read. Um, there's one series in particular that I am in the middle of reading and one book in particular I'm in the middle of reading. That's probably what started this idea. That and another book that was on my shelf for BookTube Spin. So let me just go through some of these and we'll talk about them. A lot of them, uh, well, there's not that many. I mean, in the big scheme of things, there's not that many. There are two cozy mystery series, one I'm in the middle of and one I haven't started. And we'll talk about those. And then there are four books that I found on my shelves. One I have started, one I've read, and two I haven't. And of these four books, nobody in my uh, Goodreads friend group has read any of these. Uh, I don't even think any of them have them on their TBR. Maybe the one I'm currently reading, there might be two people that have marked it to read. So these are going to be books that, you know, may be new to you that you may have heard me talk about, but um, I'm just going to kind of refresh your mind about them. And then I've got a couple of honorable mentions. Now, I should just start out by talking about the kids' books because I think pigs are a lot more prevalent in kids' books and we can't do a video about books featuring pigs without talking about Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web was probably my first full-length novel that was read to me let's call it an audiobook because our third grade teacher read it to us and I was mesmerized by it. I loved the book and I have watched at least, I know there's at least two movie adaptations, one animated and one real live. Of course, I've watched both of those. In fact, uh, Emily just watched the animated version this morning and I love it. I just love Charlotte's Web so much. I don't have a copy of the book. I had given it away or I, th I think I said this earlier in another video. It accidentally got put in with some yard sale stuff. And before I could pull it back out, somebody bought it. But I think I've picked up another copy since then. And it may be in uh, some, mo you know, like my most recent book haul. And I haven't unpacked all that. So I don't have it to show you. But Charlotte's Web. You know what I'm talking about. It's by E.B. White. And it's fantastic. So then just to give honorable mention also to um, another series that I've read one of. Maybe two. Oh, and here comes Boots. We're talking about pigs today, Boots, not cats. He's walking. The, he just had dental surgery. And now that he's got stitches in his mouth, he absolutely cannot go outside. And, um, you know, he's dealing with it. Anyway, uh, I, not too long ago. Well, I mean, <laughs> when I say not too long ago, that could be a couple of years ago. It just means like two years, not ten. I ran across a, a book by Kate DiCamillo. And it's a series called Mercy something. I don't know. It's about this pig who's been adopted by a family. But she's really, um, what is that word that that you use when you sort of humanize an animal? Anthropomorphized? Did I say that right? I feel like I didn't get that exactly right. So it's kind of like that. So I found one of those and I read it. And then... Um, 
I sent it to Chloe from Always Booked for her little girl, and I went and bought a new copy of another one in that same series, because I just thought they were so cute, and uh, I wanted to send her, because I was sending a baby gift, and I wanted to send something for Ainsley also, and so uh, anyway, I, I think she has enjoyed those. I hope so. Anyway, so that's another good little kid series, and then of course there's all kinds of books about the farm and all that, the feature pigs, but let's talk about adult books. I want to start with the Cozy Mysteries, because my friends from the Discord group Killing Time with Cozies have uh, talked a little bit about this series. I have not read any of these, and I only have books two and three. It's a six book series by Stacey McLaughlin. Um, the first one I think is called going organic can kill you uh book two is all natural murder this is the first one that i got and then later i found this one green living can be deadly these both have pigs on the cover i'm not sure how much the pig plays into things this is set on an organic farm the series is called blossom valley mysteries set on an organic farm and i believe they are uh, vegan or vegetarian or something because in the descriptions they talk a lot about tofu and tempeh and stuff like that. So I don't think the pigs are there to be eaten and, uh, you know, just a little cute little pet pig. And I'm not sure how much the pig plays into the story. Sometimes, and we've kind of talked about this in the Killing Time with Cozy, or yeah, Killing Time with Cozy's group, how sometimes because like Tick Cats, for instance, um, it's a well-known fact among Cozy Mystery people that if you put a cat on the cover or any animal, really, it's going to help sell that book. So as a group, we're reading the Kebab Kitchen Mysteries right now, and I read the first one and didn't really think anything about any animals because it, the, there is a cat, but it wasn't very prevalent, and I couldn't even remember anything about the cat. And then I was looking at the covers of all the books, and there was a cat on the cover, and I thought, where did this cat come from? So we were talking about this, uh, and I heard them say in one of the live streams that, um, and maybe it was the one that I was on where we mentioned how it almost feels like in that instance, the author wrote the book and then the publisher said, okay, you have to figure an animal into here somewhere because we have to put an animal on the cover. So we'll sell more books. That's kind of how it felt. So, you know, that could be the case here. I'm not sure, but this doesn't have a pig on the cover of this edition because it's large print, but the Amish Candy Shop Mysteries by Amanda Flower have a pig that is featured in... He's not on the cover of the first book, so he may not get introduced until the second book, but he is so funny. Him and his owner are hilarious and such a fun and wonderful addition to that series. So this is book five. I just happen to have it, uh, or maybe it's six. Actually, it's book six, Marshmallow Malice. I've read the first five books. This is six, and I need to read this one and the novella after this, and then book seven to be caught up. So I am planning to listen to this this month if I can get to it. But Jethro is the pig, and his owner is the mother of the boyfriend of the main character. <laughs> So she has them married off already. And I mean, they're barely dating. So it's, it's fun. And he is the um, detective or policeman or something. He's the um, law enforcement in that series. So he's a lot of fun. So uh, I would definitely recommend the Amish Candy Shop Mysteries by Amanda Flower. They're super fun and I really enjoy them. So before I get into this other stack of four, I want to just also give honorable mention to a series that I have that I don't even know if there's a pig in them, but you'll see in a minute why I'm going to show these to you. I have all four of these. I have not read a single one. Waltzing at the Piggly Wiggly. So I grew up in Bryan County, Oklahoma, and we had a Piggly Wiggly store in Durant. It's no longer there. I think they do exist still in some places, but we did a lot of shopping at Piggly Wiggly. My first Tiger Beat magazine was purchased at the Piggly Wiggly. I remember it. I still have it. Um, so when I saw Piggly Wiggly, I had to get these. And, and it took me a while to collect all of these. But the first one is Waltzing at the Piggly Wiggly. I don't know if I've got them all in the right order. Uh, I think I do. Kissing Babies at the Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly Wedding. And then a Piggly Wiggly Christmas. So those look really fun. I was excited to find these. They are by an author named Robert Dalby or Dalby. 
I was excited about these until I realized that this pseudonym is also the same author as the Cherry Cola, Chris, uh, Cherry Cola Book Club series, which I kind of had a love-hate relationship with. Uh, in fact, there's still, you can't see it in this shot, but there's still some Coca-Cola stuff sitting up here. Well, I've moved a lot of it now. Um because of that read-along. We did a read-along and several people dropped out because they just couldn't finish them. And I did finish the series, but I'm a little nervous now about that author. And we're friends on Facebook and everything, but um, I just felt like they were just, I don't know, they, they, something about them just didn't set well with me. So I'm nervous about these. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm hoping that they'll be good. Okay, so let's get to these books. Now, the one I have read is, I just went back and looked at my review today because I remember it being very strange. And I even wrote in my review, this book is kind of out there. <laughs> this is The Christmas Pig by Kinky Friedman. Now, Kinky Friedman, as I understand, is kind of out there. He did run for the governor of Texas. Emily Sears was telling me about this one time because she's from Texas. He is a very unusual um, individual, I believe. And, and I say that based on the books I've seen that he has written. This is a fable. So I don't know what fable it is based on, if it is a retelling of something, but several reviews of it were very positive. And I thought it was heartwarming as well, but it was just very unique. And I don't want to tell you much about it. And I need to read it again, really, to remember some of the details, but um, it says on the back, it's a story of a little boy, a talking pig, and a painting that changed the meaning of Christmas. So um, if you ever run across a copy of that at a library sale or something, you should pick it up and read it. Now the one I am reading right now, this is one of my booktube spin picks for round three, is Pigtopia by Kitty Fitzgerald. This is a tough book to read. It's written from two perspectives. One is from the perspective of a, a young man who is handicapped and it describes his exceptionalities as um, in, I guess, what you would basically call deformities. Um, he describes himself as having a pig-like head. And this book does feature pigs because he is a pig owner. He has a whole... Um, do you call it a herd of pigs? I'm not even sure. So pigs are a big part of his life and his world. And then he makes a friend with a neighbor who is a... Now, he is already an adult um, living alone with his mother who is in poor health. But the whole community have been kind of warned to stay away from him because they don't understand him. And he's actually very intelligent. He just has a hard time speaking and articulating. But he does make friends with a teenage girl who is from his neighborhood. He introduces her to his pigs and they strike up a friendship. And that's about as far as I've gotten from here. I, I am just a little ways in. Like I said, it's a tough book to read, and I've been reading other things, and I keep kind of laying it down and picking it back up, and I'm just trying when I pick it up to just read a few pages, maybe a chapter at a time, until I can uh, can get through it. But it's very, uh, it's very unique, and the dialect it's written in is very unusual, so that makes it a tough read. Uh, this one is one I picked up probably at a library book sale. I don't think I had heard of this author at this time, but I've since then listened to a couple of shorter audiobooks by her. It's by Shirley Jump, and they were pretty steamy. So I don't know if this is a book I'm going to like or not. And this is published by Harlequin. It's the from the Harlequin Next line. Um, this is about a mother and daughter on a road trip, but it's still bound to have some romance because it's published by Harlequin. But it says that the mother and daughter go on a road trip um, with the mother's pet pig. Uh, let me just, I'll just read you just a tiny bit. First of all, Hillary and Rosemary Delaney are not friends. Worse, they're mother and daughter. Hillary's a wayward 30-something running from a marriage proposal, and Rosemary's her disapproving mother, a retired lawyer who can't drive and won't fly. So they're driving together across country in a cherry red Mustang with a pot bellied pig named Reginald and a life-size cutout of Rosemary's late husband. Should be a fun trip. So, yeah, it does sound fun. If it doesn't get too steamy and, you know, bad language and stuff, then I think I will enjoy it. And I have not uh, started it, don't have any plans to read it anytime soon. Now, this is a book of my husband's that sounds really fun. Uh, he's read, uh, he's 
read just about everything by Jimmy Buffett, and uh, including this one. This is Swine Knot, a novel pigtail. And I think this is based loosely on a true story of a friend of his because she is featured in the back where she told him a story about how her family had a, a pet pig that they snuck into a four-star hotel in New York and had to keep it hidden. So this is a, a kind of an offshoot of that. It is about a Southern family who sneaks their pig into a four-star hotel in New York City. And it says that um, there is a meat-loving chef uh, who is sharpening his carving knife downstairs. So, anyway, this just sounds really fun. I have not ever read anything by Jimmy Buffett um, that I can recall, but I think this might be a good place to start. So, anyway, if you've ever read this, let me know. So, if you have ever read any of these books, let's chat about them in the comments. I know that some of you watching have read The Amish Candy Shop, and, uh, you know, we've talked about that at length in the... Uh, Cozy Mystery Discord group, which I will leave a link for down below. If you've ever read any of the Piggly Wiggly books, I would love to chat about those. I'd love to know what you thought of them. And uh, also, I, um, since I, I think I mentioned my eBay store at the beginning of this, I will start leaving a link in all my videos for the store. Uh, I will have a video coming pretty soon, but again, I don't want to make this an eBay channel. This is still my BookTube channel, but if you are interested in uh, going along on my journey with me, then I will try to make those uh, videos as interesting as possible, and I will leave a link for our store down below. Also, I open up an account just for the fun of it because I'm, I don't ever plan to get a, a Patreon page or anything like that. Um, I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not doing that, but I, there's this fun little thing going around called buy me a coffee and I started an account just for fun of it. Um, so I'll leave that link down below if you, if you feel so inclined. Um, so anyway, for now, that is it. I've got to go to book club and we're discussing Sunflower Sisters today. So I will leave a link up here for my video about, uh, comparing Civil War fiction. I very much enjoyed that. And, um, I did a whole video talking about, uh, all kinds of Civil War fiction books that are based, you know, in and around and after the Civil War. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.